I'd be bio. Cell respiration part four has its focus on the electron transport system as the final step in cell respiration. The electron transport system sets up a proton gradient, a hydrogen ion gradient, that serves to generate ATP. The electron transport system produces nine times more ATP than all of the other parts of cell respiration combined. All of part four will be for higher level students. The essential ideas are cell respiration supplies energy for the functions of life and energy is converted to a usable form in cell respiration. Here is the outline of all the movies available for the cell respiration unit. Use this outline to find the movie you need for review. This movie is focused here. Recall that when oxygen is present, pyruvate moves into the mitochondrion. I'm starting with this slide to emphasize that in the electron transport system, oxygen plays its very, very important role. Stay tuned for this detail. Also recall that with the end of the Krebs cycle, the end of the Krebs cycle, all of the carbon dioxide has been formed and released as waste. All the energy for ATP production in the electron transport system resides in NADH and FADH2. Cell respiration is the controlled release of energy from glucose or other organic compounds to form ATP. Keep this in mind, ATP is what it's all about and ATP provides immediate energy for cell needs, like active transport, synthesis of large molecules, or sliding protein filaments that provide for movement. Aerobic cell respiration requires oxygen, and aerobic cell respiration gives a large yield of ATP from glucose. The oxygen plays its role here in a process known as oxidative phosphorylation, work on gaining control of this language. The energy for ATP production in the electron transport system comes from NADH and FADH2 as coenzymes that shuttle electrons held in high energy positions. They shuttle those electrons to the electron transport system. Oxygen is the ultimate electron acceptor and as it accepts electrons and hydrogen, it is in turn reduced to water. All of the oxygen in water has come from the oxygen taken into the cell by diffusion. Listen to my language, hear it repeated, and work to gain control of it. Here are three IB syllabus statements that you've seen before. Define oxidation reduction reactions and describe the role of coenzymes in redox reactions. NAD plus and FAD oxidize organic intermediates in cell respiration to become reduced. In their reduced forms, NADH and FADH2, they transfer electrons held in high energy positions to the electron transport system. Cell respiration involves the oxidation reduction of electron carriers. In the electron transport system, electron carriers are repeatedly oxidized and reduced as electrons change position and release energy. Analyze diagrams of the pathways of aerobic respiration to deduce where decarboxylation and oxidation reactions occur. Keep your eye on the electron transport system for oxidation reduction reactions. I will use ETS as a short for electron transport system. NAD plus is an electron acceptor serving to oxidize organic intermediates in respiration. As NAD plus grabs electrons and hydrogen, it becomes reduced to NADH. NADH transports electrons and hydrogen to the electron transport chain. The NADH contains stored energy in the position of the electrons it carries. FAD also serves to oxidize organic intermediates to become reduced to FADH2. FADH2 transports electrons and hydrogens to the electron transport chain. The FADH2 contains stored energy in the position of the electrons it carries. In part two, I mentioned that ATP formation in glycolysis and the Krebs cycle occurs when a phosphate group is transferred to ADP from a substrate molecule. 
In the electron transport system, ATP synthesis happens slightly differently. Keep an eye open for the difference. In the ETS, ATP synthesis occurs by a process known as oxidative phosphorylation. So as I slowly move this movie toward the ETS, here are two IB syllabus statements. Energy released by oxidation reactions is carried to the cristae of the mitochondria by reduced NAD and FAD. Reduced NAD is NADH. Reduced FAD is FADH2. Cell respiration involves the oxidation and reduction of electron carriers. NADH and FADH2 are mobile electron carriers, but in the ETS, there are stationary electron carriers, electron carriers embedded in the inner membrane of the mitochondrion. Stay tuned. Again, NADH and FADH2 carry electrons held in high energy orbitals to the electron transport system. NADH and FADH2 have stored energy and move this potential energy to the electron transport system. You can see the term oxidative phosphorylation here. The ATP formed at the ETS is formed by this process. And there's another term that I've not yet introduced. It's called chemiosmosis. Take it slowly, take in the language, take notes, ask questions. So the focus of part four, this movie, takes place on the inner membrane of the mitochondrion. Electron carriers are embedded in the inner membrane. The first of the electron carriers grabs the electrons and hydrogens from NADH. NADH is oxidized. Here's another image of the mitochondrion. The inner membrane of the mitochondrion has electron carriers known as the electron transport chain. We can't see the electron transport chain in this simple diagram. The inner membrane also has enzymes that synthesize ATP, known as ATP synthases, or ATP ACE for short. These are large proteins visible to an electron microscope. Slowly but surely leading into the detail, here is a diagram of the inner membrane of the mitochondrion. You can see electron carriers embedded in the membrane here. You can see the ATP synthesis here. You can see NADH and FADH2 arriving here. The space between the two membranes, the outer and the inner membrane of the mitochondrion, has a big role to play. This is known as the intermembrane space. You can see some hydrogen ion activity here. You can stop the movie now to examine this slide more closely, but be patient. I'm just setting the stage for explanation that's around the corner. Here's another diagram of the mitochondrion. Here's the inner membrane. You can see ATP aces projecting into the matrix. Here is the intermembrane space, and you can see numerous hydrogen ions in the intermembrane space. What this diagram does not show is the electron transport chain, the electron carriers embedded in the inner membrane. Here is an electron micrograph of the inner membrane. The ATP aces can be seen projecting into the matrix. This is the intermembrane space. So now we're ready for these two IB syllabus statements. Explain how hydrogen ions are pumped by the transfer of electrons between carriers in the electron transport chain. Explain chemiosmosis, including the diffusion of protons, hydrogen ions, through ATP synthase to generate ATP. This is a very simplified diagram of how the ETS works. I'll start with this as the first explanation of the various processes at work. NADH is oxidized by electron carriers embedded in the inner membrane. The electrons given over to the electron carriers release energy as they move to less energetic orbitals. The release of energy serves to pump hydrogen ions into the intermembrane space. The accumulation of hydrogen ions in the intermembrane space results in the diffusion of ions through the ATP synthase, the ATPase, and ATP 
is synthesized. In fact, there are numerous electron carriers embedded in the inner membrane of the mitochondrion. Each carrier is more electronegative than the carrier before it. What this means is that this carrier at the end of the chain is more electronegative than the one before it, and this one is more electronegative than the one before it, and so on. In other words, this carrier holds electrons more tightly than this carrier, and this carrier holds electrons more tightly than this carrier, and so on. As the electrons and hydrogen ions are pulled from NADH, the electrons are pulled downhill in energy terms toward more and more electronegative carriers. As the electrons are moved downhill in energy terms, energy is released serving to pump hydrogen ions into the intermembrane space. Oxygen is the final electron acceptor, pulling electrons to their most stable, least energetic position. Oxygen is the most electronegative species in the electron transport chain. Oxygen is reduced to water here. Here is the inner membrane of the mitochondrion. And here is the electron transport chain with numerous carriers embedded in the inner membrane. The first carrier oxidizes the 10 available NADH molecules, two from glycolysis, two from the link reaction, and six from the Krebs cycle. As the electrons are moved energetically downhill toward oxygen as a final electron acceptor, energy is released serving to pump hydrogens into the intermembrane space. FADH2 is oxidized by the second carrier in the chain. As a result, fewer hydrogen ions are pumped by the electrons carried by FADH2. Now, the hydrogen ions accumulate in the intermembrane space, creating an electrochemical gradient, a high concentration of positively charged ions here in the intermembrane space. And there's a low concentration of positively charged ions in the matrix. Thus, the ions, also known as protons, diffuse down their gradient through the ATP synthase. This passive diffusion of hydrogen ions due to the electrochemical gradient serves to synthesize ATP. This diagram displays the ETS well, although the font is small, bear down. The intermembrane space is here, and the matrix is here, and the inner membrane with its embedded electron carriers is here. NADH and FADH2 are oxidized by electron carriers, protein electron carriers in the membrane. Each electron carrier is more electronegative than the one before it, pulling the electrons energetically downhill. Oxygen is the most electronegative species in the chain, serving as the final electron acceptors. Electrons are pulled downhill toward oxygen, and this is nicely shown in this diagram. The release of energy that accompanies the change in the position of electrons from one carrier to the next results in hydrogen ions being pumped into the intermembrane space. The accumulation of hydrogen ions in the intermembrane space creates an electrochemical gradient. Hydrogen ions are particles and they are charged. The hydrogen ions diffuse down the gradient through the ATP synthase in a process known as chemiosmosis. ATP is synthesized. ADP is joined to a free inorganic phosphate. This is oxidative phosphorylation. Here are two IB syllabus statements that I've covered over the last four slides. You may need to go back to review. Explain the role of oxygen in maintaining chemiosmosis. State that oxygen is needed to bind with the free protons to maintain the hydrogen gradient resulting in the formation of water. As the hydrogen ions diffuse out of the intermembrane space into the matrix, they're taken up by oxygen to form water, and this serves to maintain the gradient. High concentration of hydrogen ions here, low concentration here, because of the uptake of hydrogen ions by oxygen to form water. 
Oxygen, as the most electronegative species in the electron transport chain, draws electrons downhill, energetically speaking. You can see the change in energy along this axis of the graph, from the first electron carrier in the ETS all the way to oxygen. As electrons shift from outer, more energetic orbitals to inner, less energetic orbitals, energy is released, and this causes hydrogen ions to be pumped from the matrix to the intermembrane space. The accumulation of hydrogen ions in the intermembrane space creates an electrochemical gradient that drives chemiosmosis. The diffusion of hydrogen ions through the ATP synthase, where ATP is joined to a free inorganic phosphate in the formation of ATP. Oxygen pulls electrons towards it, and oxygen is reduced to water. The flow of electrons in the electron transport chain pumps hydrogen ions into the intermembrane space. The accumulation of hydrogen ions in the intermembrane space creates an electrochemical gradient that drives chemiosmosis. The diffusion of hydrogen ions through the ATP synthase. ATP synthesis occurs. ADP is joined to a free inorganic phosphate. This is known as oxidative phosphorylation. This diagram is detailed and good to study. Chemiosmosis is the coupling of ATP synthesis to the electron transport chain. The oxidation of NADH is here. The reduction of oxygen to water is here. Electrons are moved from one carrier to the next, serving to pump hydrogen ions into the intermembrane space, where they diffuse back to the matrix through an ATP synthase enzyme, joining with oxygen to form water, thus maintaining the electrochemical gradient. The presence of oxygen drives the synthesis of ATP. This is oxidative phosphorylation. Take some time with this slide. It might interest you to know that it's been determined that each NADH results in three ATP molecules. So 10 NADH molecules results in 30 ATP. Each FADH2 results in two ATP molecules. So two FADH2 molecules results in four ATP. The ETS is responsible for 34 ATP molecules per glucose. The electron carriers of the electron transport chain are composed of protein complexes, multiple polypeptide chains bound to other atoms such as copper, iron, manganese, and sulfur. ATP synthase is a large enzyme, we can see the molecule in electron micrographs, that synthesizes ATP from ADP and a free inorganic phosphate. The enzyme action is driven by the energy in an ion gradient, an electrochemical gradient, a diffusion gradient. Chemiosmosis is a coupling of the electron transport chain to the pumping of hydrogen ions to a hydrogen ion gradient to ATP synthesis. Here is a diagram of ATP in chemiosmotic oxidative phosphorylation, ADP, is joined to a free inorganic phosphate to form ATP. And the bonds between the phosphates are easily broken to provide energy for active transport, movement, and anabolic reactions like protein synthesis. Here's an electron micrograph of a mitochondrion. You can see the high surface area of the inner membrane. The high surface area of the inner membrane allows for the presence of numerous electron transport systems and numerous ATP aces. Here are images of electron tomography of mitochondria. Electron tomography is an extension of traditional transmission electron microscopy. A beam of electrons is passed through the sample at incremental degrees of rotation around the center of the target sample. This information is used to assemble a three-dimensional image of the mitochondrion. So that brings us to these IB syllabus statements. Explain how the structure of the mitochondrion is adapted to its function. Annotate the mitochondrion to illustrate the form-function relationship 
of the mitochondrion. The highly folded inner membrane of the mitochondrion provides large surface area for electron transport chains and ATPases. The intermembrane space is a compartment adapted to the accumulation of hydrogen ions. The accumulation of hydrogen ions sets up an electrochemical gradient that results in ATP synthesis through chemiosmosis. The matrix is a mitochondrial solution composed of enzymes for the Krebs cycle and the link reaction. In this electron micrograph, you can see the ATPases as they project into the matrix. You can see the folded nature of the inner membrane that provides high surface area for the embedded protein complexes of the electron transport chains. The intermembrane space here is a compartment that accumulates hydrogen ions serving to generate a gradient and an electrochemical gradient that drives ATP synthesis. The mitochondrion displays beautiful structure-function relationships. The highly folded inner membrane, the deep folds of which are called the cristae, provide for numerous electron transport complexes and ATP synthases. The intermembrane space allows for the accumulation of hydrogen ions that drives ATP synthesis through chemiosmosis. The matrix is a solution with Krebs cycle enzymes. Can you identify the four regions of the mitochondrion labeled here? You can stop the movie now or continue with me. Spend some time with this slide. Could you label the cristae? So in overview, cell respiration is the controlled release of energy from glucose or other organic compounds to form ATP. ATP is formed in glycolysis, the Krebs cycle, and in the electron transport system by chemiosmosis. Most of the ATP is formed here in a process known as oxidative phosphorylation. In total, depending on certain circumstances, 36 to 38 ATP molecules are formed per glucose. 34 of those molecules are produced at the electron transport system. In overview, Glucose and the intermediates that follow are oxidized. NADH is formed carrying high energy electrons to the electron transport system where a hydrogen ion gradient is formed resulting in ATP formation. Here is the table that accounts for all products in all parts of cell respiration. This is the very same table that I presented to you in part three. Now you should be able to explain the production of 34 ATPs as a part of the electron transport system. Spend some time with this table. It's important for you to remember the role of oxygen, as oxygen does not appear on this table. Oxygen is the final electron acceptor in the transformation of chemical energy in glucose to the chemical energy in ATP. Oxygen is reduced, electrons and hydrogens, to water. These IB syllabus statements should feel very comfortable at this point. Cell respiration is the controlled release of energy from glucose or other organic compounds to form ATP. Aerobic cell respiration requires oxygen and gives a large yield of ATP from glucose. ATP provides immediate energy for cell needs, active transport synthesis of large molecules, and sliding protein filaments, in other words, motion. This slide calculates the efficiency of cell respiration. Each mole of ATP produces 7.3 kcals, while each mole of glucose produces 686 kcal. Now, we have 36 to 38 moles of ATP per mole of glucose, and thus that means that the efficiency is nearly 40%. The rest of the energy goes to heat. This slide is a good one to study because it accounts for ATP synthesis from all parts of respiration. And that brings us to the end of IB Bio, Cell Respiration, Part 4.